Hey, what's up, guys? This is GK. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Kubernetes RBAC inside Google Kubernetes engine. So the way it works is you have Google Cloud's IAM, which is its own identity management. And then you already have role-based access controls in Kubernetes. So they both work in conjunction to give a user, a group of users, or a service account specific permissions or specific actions to perform on Kubernetes cluster. So let's say the scenario is that there are a group of developers who needed an access in production, in production cluster of GKE. They should not perform actions such as delete pod or do any operations that would disrupt the production environment. For instance, in this case, I will give them only, let's say, get pods uh, permission to that service account and that service account can be impersonated by uh, the developers. So if you have any questions around how to use service accounts and all those things, you can always go back and follow my playlist. So I'm going to divide this video into two sections. One, introduction to RBAC and just to give you high level overview of RBAC. In the second part of the video, I'm going to show you how to give permissions to that service account, like whatever we have discussed. So let's get started. So if you don't know what is RBAC, RBAC is nothing but it's role-based access control. It's a feature in Kubernetes and what it does is it helps you to create fine-grained permissions to the users and workloads so that they can perform certain actions on the resources in your cluster. So what are resources? It could be the pods, it could be the nodes or anything that is part of the cluster. If you want to give like only certain permissions to certain group of users, you have to use RBAC inside Kubernetes. Now if you are using Google Cloud, a Kubernetes engine, or you know EKS inside AWS, you have to work with both IAM of those clouds and as well as RBAC to give permissions uh, to the users. And here for this demo, I'm using a service account functionality or service account feature inside Google Cloud IAM. Okay, this is not the service account of Kubernetes. Don't get confused there. So basically, you can define RBAC rules in a cluster role and role objects, and then assign those roles with cluster role binding and role binding objects. You'll understand this more clearly in the demo. In this case, let's say I'm going to use a cluster role. Okay, cluster role is set at the whole cluster. Instead of you know setting at a namespace level, you're going to give the permissions to entire cluster. So cluster role binding, assign a cluster role to a user or group for all namespaces inside cluster. So this is what we're going to do. And if you're using role binding, then you're going to assign that permission to a specific namespace. So now first things first, uh, what we have to do is go and create a cluster. Okay, just for the sake of the demo, I'm using autopilot cluster. Uh, whenever you want to create any cluster inside Google Cloud, by default, it is giving you autopilot cluster. So click on create. You can also switch back to the older cluster by, by uh, clicking on switch to standard cluster here. Anyway, so, I'm using the autopilot cluster, click on create. So while it takes some time to create the cluster, what we have to do is create a service account. So go to the IAM section and click on service accounts. And inside service accounts, click on create service account, give a service account name such as dev, let's say read only. Service account used by developers inside prod cluster click on create and continue and I want to assign permissions to this service account. So select the role and I have already created a role with certain permissions. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to show you what permissions it has and click on continue and done. All right. So I want to show you what permissions that role has. So click on role and go to the custom role that I've created. So what I've done is instead of using the default roles that are already there in Google Cloud, I have created a custom role with specific permissions that are only needed for my actions in this project. Like for instance, in this case, all I need is containers, container clusters get and container clusters list. So without these two permissions, the service account cannot even talk to the Kubernetes cluster from your laptop or from your you know, shell because these permissions are needed. Your IAM at the Google Cloud level will give you permissions to talk to the cluster 
and then the R back within Kubernetes that we are going to assign will give you permissions to perform actions inside the Kubernetes cluster. So the next thing is we're going to create service account keys. So go to the service account and we've just created dev ro service account. So click on that service account, go to the keys section. If you are not sure about how to use service accounts and all those things, I have very well explained it long back. You can check my GCP playlist and create a new key. Okay, all right, call it as a So we have done all the necessary steps inside the console with respect to the service account. Then the next thing that we have to do is check if our cluster is ready. The cluster is still getting created. So while that is getting created, go to your terminal and check what is currently the configuration of your G cloud list. So there is already a service account that I've used in past, uh, which has the same permissions. So this terminal has permissions to perform actions using the service account. You can see the account type is of service account. And then now let's say that I'm going to bring in one more terminal and uh, let's see what is the configuration that I have here. This is also currently set to the same service account. I want to authenticate my admin user to perform certain actions within the cluster, right? So if I type gcloud config list now, you will see that it is now currently pointing to my admin user account. So we already have a cluster. I want to deploy a sample container. So click on deploy and use nginx and continue, continue and deploy. It's going to take a while. I will pause the video and resume once it is done. So we have our cluster ready and we also have our pod deployed or we have our application deployed. Next thing is you want to connect to the cluster. So click on the clusters or go back and then you see three dots at the right. Click on actions and click on connect. You'll get the connection string for the G cloud command line and enter, paste it and enter. So now we have everything set from the command line perspective. So I've already created the YAML sample files for the role and the cluster binding. I'm gonna show you first the role. So what it has, it's a very simple thing. Uh, it starts with kind as cluster role and the API version, as you know, it's standard and metadata, I gave it as a pod reader because this role is to have only permissions of read only. And then the resources is for pods and anybody who have these permissions will and can perform only get and list. So once this role is created and this has to be assigned to, to the service account that we have created. So if you see here, it has again the pod reader binding that that's the cluster role binding. So let me clear the screen and show it again. So the kind is cluster role binding means these permissions are applied for the whole cluster, meaning that uh, the, the users who are having the service account permissions or the users who can impersonate the service account can perform those read only actions across the cluster. So it starts with the kind and then the name and the user. And most important thing here to understand is we're going to give the service account. So I've already created one service account. I'm using another service account. Don't get confused there. You can use any service account here as long as you're having two main permissions, access to the cluster. So as you can see, I'm giving a service account here and then uh, namespace as default and kind as cluster role, which we are referring to the previous document that where we have created a pod reader. That's pretty much it. That's the reference we are using. So now run this command cube cuttle just to make sure that uh, we are getting notes here and cube CTL apply. 
So the first one is pod reader role. And then the next one is pod reader binding. So these two things we have done. Now let's try if this RBAC is actually working. So to test that out, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to connect to the cluster as a service account. So to do that, let's check in the config list. What is the account currently? And the account is multi cloud guy, which is not what we want. So we want to authenticate or we want to add the service account. So I already have a service account here and the command to authenticate the service account is gcloud auth activate service account and the service account uh, name here and the service account key file. It is similar to your IAM users in AWS. So once it is activated, type gcloud config list, gcloud config list. And now the account is the service account. So clear the screen. So type kubectl get nodes. Okay, and kubectl get pods. Now as an end user, the end user, you know, if you give, if you tell the developer that, hey, your service account has no write permissions, the first thing that they're going to do is connect. So let's try that scenario as well. So now once we have activated the service, activated the service account, we are trying if the developer is able to connect. Now the developer is getting the pod information. That is all great. But let's say if the developer is trying to delete the pod, what will happen here? Now, you can see the error that we got here. It says requires one of the permission container dot pods dot delete. This is what we are expecting as well because we never wanted the developer to perform these action, actions such as delete pod and other things. Let me know in the comment section if you are confused about this tutorial or when you are trying to do this if you had any issues and try to play around by giving more permissions and deleting permissions. All right, so that's about this video. So if you need more explanation on this or if you want to get more understanding of the basic Kubernetes, please let me know in the comment section. We can cover that. I'll try to cover that. Thanks again for watching this. And if you haven't subscribed, do click on subscribe. I'll come up with more content on GKE. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.